Hi all, welcome to Smart Catalyst, 8th February 2019. Today we will be discussing these six topics. The first one is related with the Environmental Performance Index. The second is related with the e-cigarettes and its regulation in India. Third is related with the recent uh, easing of ECB norms undertaken by RBI in order to help the insolvency process in India. Fourth is related with the recent decision taken in the Monetary Policy Committee review of RBI. The fifth one is related with the National Deworming Day. The last article is related with the various government initiatives undertaken in order to improve in order to promote renewable energy in India. Let's move to the first article. The first article is related with Environmental Performance Index, one of the unique index that speaks about the performance of environmental factors in a particular country. Environmental Performance Index is an index prepared by Yale University and Columbia University in collaboration with the World Economic Forum. And Environmental Performance Index is a report that is working on quantifying and numerically marking the performance of a particular country's environmental policies. And these environmental policies are classified into two broad areas. One is based on environmental health, the second is based on ecosystem vitality. Ecosystem vitality has been given maximum weightage of 0.6, that is 60 percentage, and environmental health is given a weightage of 40 percentage. Under this ecosystem vitality, it speaks about biodiversity, habitat, forest, fisheries, climate and energy, air pollution, water resources and agriculture. The crucial factors of environment that helps in sustainment of environment are classified under ecosystem vitality. At the same time, under environmental health, the different factors like air quality, water quality, heavy metals, lead exposure, sanitation, PM 2.5, PM 2.5 exposure, drinking water, household solid fuels. These factors have been included under the environmental health category. Despite the government of India being undertaking various other schemes to improve the status of environment in the country, the policies seem to be providing less relief to the existing problems. Since the policies are ineffective, the ranking of India has uh, come down comparing to the year of 2016. In 2016, India's rank in the index was 141, whereas in 2018, the rank is 177. And India is ranking 177th out of 180 world countries assessed in the report. The sorry figure to note that India was among the bottom 5 countries in the 2018 report. India is soon expected to be the 5th largest economy in the world. but uh, the economic growth should be sustainable and in order to have a sustainable economic growth we need to protect our environment government should consider the findings of this index more serious manner and have to implement proactive measures in order to provide sustainable future for our future generation the second article is related with e-cigarettes and regulatory mechanism available in india e-cigarettes touted to be a replacement for cigarette smoking has got its own health implication this has been discussed in this article e-cigarettes are touted to be the substitutes for the normal cigarettes. Recent uh, statistics released by WHO says that every minute 11 million cigarettes are being smoked around the world and every minute 10 people die from the habit of smoking cigarette. And most important health hazard caused by smoking is the damage caused to the inner lining of lungs. Tar and various other chemicals present in the cigarette, it sars the inner lining of the lung and creates various pulmonary diseases. E-cigarettes have been developed by cutting down the smoke part in the normal cigarette. E-cigarette is nothing but electronic cigarette. It is a handheld electronic device that stimulates the feeling of smoking. The major chemical component of cigarette that gives a feeling of gratification is nicotine. In an e-cigarette, the nicotine is provided in a liquid form and this liquid form is heated by a electronic equipment. And this electronic equipment leads to an aerosol. And this aerosol known as vapor is inhaled by the user. This gives the feel of gratification caused by the actual cigarette. The supporters of uh, e-cigarettes claim that since it is smokeless, it doesn't cause any harm to the people who are using it. But there are various health implications attributed to the usage of e-cigarettes all over the world. Usage of cigarettes and other tobacco products is high in India. India is home to over 100 million smokers. And this is seen as a huge market by the global vaping agents to market their e-cigarette products. The recent market survey undertaken in the year of 2017 says that India is market to 15.6 million US dollars of e-cigarette products and the industry is about to grow at 60% till 2022.
weighing upon this huge market potential many companies are now using the digital platforms to promote their e-cigarette products since e-cigarette by its own virtue has got few health implications around 8 indian states have banned e-cigarettes in the country but it has not been banned in the national level this is due to a recent uh, judgment given by delhi high court also union ministry of health in august 2018 gave advisory to the states to ban sale and import of e-cigarettes even after eight states have banned the usage of e-cigarettes in the state due to their presence in internet platforms like facebook whatsapp and twitter many youngsters are uh, hooked towards using the e-cigarettes now now union ministry of information technology has proposed to change the rules present in information technology act these changes would disable the internet platforms like facebook whatsapp and twitter from promoting and creating advertisement for e-cigarette products few critics criticize this move of the government citing the breach of article 19 article 19 speaks about freedom of speech but that freedom of speech should not create any harm to the public health since e-cigarettes has the potential to cause health hazards to the public banning of e-cigarettes under information technology act cannot be classified as breach of article 19 the third article is related with the recent uh, easing of ecb norms by rbi most of the bidders for the insolvent companies they find it difficult to raise funds in domestic market in order to help them rbi has permitted external commercial borrowing in insolvency process indian finance sector is marred with the menace of npas and the government of india had introduced insolvency bankruptcy code 2016 in order to resolve the companies which are financially insolvent and in order to resolve an insolvent company the role of bidder is crucial in order to resolve a non performing asset related to an insolvent company the role of bidder becomes important so recently it was found that due to lack of availability of funds many bidders were unable to bid for the insolvent companies considering this fact rbi has recently allowed these bidders to borrow money from foreign lands that is it has allowed the bidders to avail funds through an external commercial borrowing method in this context it becomes uh, pertinent for us to know about the basics of ecb the basics of bcb includes the different methods of uh, raising funds through external commercial borrowing method and the different um, classifications of industries under the ecb notification of rbi the external commercial borrowing can be taken under two routes the one is automatic route the second is approved route up to a particular quantum of borrowing the companies can borrow under automatic route and after that particular quantum or for the companies which are uh, critically important for national security and various other uh, factors they have to seek or they have to seek prior approval from rbi to avail ecb these are the two routes of raising funds through ecb that can be used the ecb external commercial borrowing can be raised using seven instruments the seven instruments are bank loans securitized instruments like bonds non convertible bonds or convertible bonds third is the buyers credit fourth is suppliers credit fifth is the foreign currency convertible bonds sixth is financial lease and the last one is foreign currency exchangeable bonds these foreign currency exchangeable bonds can be availed only under automatic route and it is not available under approved route and how this rbi permission on using ecbs is going to ease down the nps in the country first uh, there has been a paucity of funds in india so the bidders are now able to raise the foreign debt second under the new ecb norms the bidders may benefit more uh, more flexibility has been incorporated under the new ecb norms the new ecb norms also says that the current pricing cap can be relaxed thereby helping the bidders by allowing the bidders to raise funds in the most cost efficient manner ECB one important aspect of uh, using ECB is that it provides cheaper capital so this cheaper capital would fuel in the process of IBC thereby resolving the non performing asset crisis of indian financial sector only debt financing has been the source for other resolution applicants as of now and introduction of ECB would provide another viable option for the resolution applicants this will help in improving the pace of resolution process in india the fourth article is about the decisions taken in 
the recently concluded monetary policy committee meeting here the interest rates have been reduced considering that the rate of inflation is declining in the past quarters the recent bi monthly monetary policy review committee meeting it was decided by the rbi to cut down the repo rate by 25 basis points now the repo rate stands at 6.25 percentage and in the past 18 months RBI has reduced the rate for the first time. This is because the RBI has assessed the inflation situation in the country. It has moved from calibrated tightening to the neutral stance. This indicates that there is no chance of inflation triggered economic problem in India. Considering this, RBI has cut down the repo rate by 25 basis points. This is one important decision taken in the RBI meeting. The second important decision was to increase the limit of collateral free form loans from 1 lakh to 1.6 lakhs. Also the lending rules for NBFCs and farmers have been eased out. These decisions undertaken by RBI is aimed at improving consumption, private investment and thereby giving a boost to economic growth. The announcement made in the interim budget of the financial year 2019-20. In the interim budget, it was announced by the government that government is planning to provide and the decisions undertaken in the recent RBI meeting is a continuum of the decisions undertaken or the proposals made in the interim budget of the financial year 2019-20. In the interim budget, the government had taken decision on tax rebate, standard deduction, no TDS on interest payments, tax exemption on capital gains. Also, these decisions taken by the government, these proposals made in the budget is also focused on boosting consumption, private investment and economic growth. In the past 18 months, the inflation rate was under control and for any economy to grow in a faster pace, there should be a healthy rate of inflation. Inflation is caused by increase in demand or uh, reduced supply. How does a demand increase in economy? Demand for a particular product increases only when the product becomes affordable. For a product to be affordable by general public, they should be receiving adequate income to buy that product. And in order to have income, employment has to be generated. And in order to generate employment, industries should be receiving funds. And one of the important source for the companies to receive funds is through bank credit. And now, by the reduction of repo rate, the availability of bank credit becomes easy. The interest rate of bank loans will come down. By this, there will be a flow of funds into the industrial sector. This would in turn lead to generation of employment, which would in turn lead to rising income level of individuals. This rise in income level will lead to consumption and savings. This consumption would, will again go into the economy cycle thereby boosting the economic growth of the country. Whereas this savings will turn out to be investment for the household or investment for the company again, if the money is being invested in share market. This way, the recent decisions undertaken by RBI and the proposals made in the union budget has greater impact on improving the consumption, boosting private investments and boosting the economic growth of the country. The fifth article is about uh, the impending malnutrition and undernutrition caused in India by worms in the stomach of the children. And in order to curtail that, the government has declared February 8th of every year as National Dewarming Day. And this National Dewarming Day is an initiative of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in order to make every child in the country warm free. The worms are known as helminths. The helminths are transmitted through soil contaminated with fecal matter. And these helminths are known as soil transmitted helminths and these helminths are parasitic worms residing in the intestinal layer of children. Apart from this soil transmitted helminths, there are also other worms like roundworm, ascaris lumbricoids, whipworm, tricuris tricura and hookworms, necator americanus and ankylostoma duodenale. And these five worms infect people and it affects children mostly. We all know the fact that India is faring poorly in hunger index released by IFPRI. One of the important parameters analyzed in hunger index is malnutrition among children. And malnutrition among children is aggravated by these worms present in their intestinal linings. Apart from create and malnutrition is not an economic factor alone it is a social factor malnutrition affects the accumulation of social capital in a country how it is going to affect the social capital it affects the 
cognitive development and physical development of a child when there is lack of cognitive and physical development the child is going to underperform in school the quality of education is going to come down because of reduced cognitive development and the school attendance is going to come down because of reduced physical development uh, with uh, reduced quality and quantity of education the child loses its chance of economic development and with the reduced economic development of individual the economic productivity of a country comes down so malnutrition plays a so the deworming becomes important not only in terms of a personal health also in the terms of national economic health is government is undertaking this initiative in a more serious manner and this is indicated by the fact that the national deworming day initiative is one of the largest public health programs reaching large number of children during a short period the sixth article is about the different promotions undertaken by the government different initiatives undertaken by the government in order to promote grid based renewable energy in india under paris climate accord government of india has pledged to produce 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022 in order to improve the renewable energy sector in the country developing grid interactive renewable energy becomes more important this becomes imperative due to the lack of battery technology available in the country with the lack of uh, proper battery technology the storage of excess electricity produced by the renewable power plants comes down thereby leads to wastage of electricity produced the grid interactive renewable energy will solve the problems associated with dissipation of electricity from the source in order to improve this grid interactive renewable energy the government has undertaken various measures since grid interactive renewable energy systems are cost intensive government has allowed 100% fdi under automatic route also for any new solar and wind power projects that is that will be commissioned up to march 2022 the central government has waived the interstate transmission system charges the government has notified standard bidding guidelines thereby enabling the distribution licensee to procure solar and wind power at competitive rates in a cost effective manner also the government has initiated a new project called as green energy corridor project to facilitate grid integration of large scale renewable energy produced in different parts of the country there is an uncertainty associated with the power purchase undertaken by the government in order to allay the fears associated with the power purchase agreements the government has declared the trajectory for renewable purchase obligation up to the year 2022 these initiatives undertaken by the government will help in promoting the grid interactive renewable energy in country thank you